Well, welcome to the Hills Church at Home. Hey, if you can, take a moment, maybe pour a hot cup of coffee. It's a cool morning. Um, you can download our message notes and you can download the kids activity sheet at hillschurcharcadia.org. In fact, you can even hit pause if you need to go do all of those. That's the benefit of, of doing it like this way. But we're going to pray and then we're going to get into God's uh, word today. And we're going to look at an individual that runs and has a burning question for Jesus. Maybe you have a burning question today that you want to ask the Lord. And let me tell you, he's quick to want to respond. So, Father, we thank you for today. We do. We command your blessing on all that we do. But we stop today to quiet our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, and to open our eyes into what James called the perfect law of liberty. So we look into that perfect law today, but as we look into it, it is looking into us, and we submit to you spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In fact, I remember I, I first uh, learned the terms, yes, sir, no, sir, playing high school football because my coaches would not allow the, yeah, and, and it was yes, sir, no, sir. And let me tell you, we did enough push-ups that it was ingrained in you, the yes, sir, or no, sir. You know, you would think as we get into this story today that uh, if you had a question for Jesus and he answered a question, well, as we look today, he has something better in mind, that you do what he said to do. In fact, I want to ask you that. Let's make it personal today. If you ran to Jesus for a response to a question that you had, and after that conversation, what would you change? Would you change or would you walk away sad because you couldn't do what he asked you to do well, let's look at that story today. Mark chapter ten, uh, verses seventeen through twenty-two. I'm reading in the New King James version. What's interesting is Matthew, Mark, and Luke showed this story of what is referred to as the rich young, young ruler. Though many times it will just say one came running. Well, let's read these verses together. Mark ten verses 17 through 22. Now, as he was going out on the road, this is Jesus. As he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? What's the question? What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except one, and that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus looking at him, loved him, and said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. Let me read the end of verse 21, because I think that's so important. And come take up the cross and follow me. If you hear anything at all today through the message, I pray that it's these words that the Holy Spirit speaks to our heart. Come, take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and he went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. In fact, we read these uh, verses and we kind of get a totally different perspective of, of this uh, young ruler. In fact, uh, the other gospels, rich young ruler. He evidently has, has a question that's been burning in his heart. 
And maybe he thought, if I ever run into this Jesus guy, I'm going to ask him this one question. In fact, he runs to Jesus and then falls on his knees. You know, many times in the gospel, when we see people falling on their knees, they're requesting healing or wanting to be healed. Well, he falls on his knees in an act of humility and submission, and he's got this very urgent, urgent request. What shall I do that I may have eternal life? Isn't it interesting that we have to fight that works mentality? What should I do? What should I do? You know, don't run to Jesus with questions that you want answered because he's going to have a whole different purpose and direction for what he sees in our lives. In fact, I love what Jesus does is he mixes up. In fact, he goes through the Ten Commandments. I'm going to throw these on the screen real quick and let me kind of fire them off. The Ten Commandments, because he says, you know the commandments. And here are the Ten Commandments. Ready? Number one. No other gods before me. Number two, no other images. Number three, do not take my name in vain. Number four, keep the Sabbath day. Number five, honor your father and mother. Number six, murder. Numbers, no, no murder, I should say. I got to correct that. Number seven, no adultery. Number eight, do not steal. Number nine, do not bear false witness. And 10, do not covet. So Jesus, though, pitches this to him when he answers the question. He says, you know the commandments. And here's what Jesus says to him. Ready for this order? He says, number seven, do not commit adultery. Number six, he says, do not murder. Number eight, do not steal. Number nine, do not bear false witness. And he says, do not defraud. No defraud in there. Interesting. Number five, right? Honor your father and mother. And yet this young man, this rich young ruler says all of these things, I have obeyed from my youth. Jesus does a complete twist. You'd think he would have said, no, excuse me, sir. Um, you missed a few and you went out of order because all these things I've obeyed from my youth. No, he just says those words. All of these I have obeyed from my youth. But Jesus goes on and he looks at him. He loves him. He tells him to go sell all that he has give it to the poor and follow him. You know, and I have looked at this verse over and over throughout the years. And I remember just a couple of years ago when we were studying the book of James in church, I came across this verse in James chapter five, verse four and five. Let's read that. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury, and you have fattened your hearts in the day of slaughter. I remember reading that. I, I remember thinking, that must click with some other one. And here's my interpretation. When Jesus mentions to him about defrauding, and he's obeyed all of those, I wonder if James later picks up on it for us to show it that maybe in his business, he wasn't taking care of the people like he should have, and their prayers reached the ears of the Lord. Well, there's a lot we could unpack in there. Their prayers reached the ears of the Lord. I believe that Jesus twisted the Ten Commandments around to really use that word to defraud, to allow his words to convict his heart so that there would be complete change. Because here's what's interesting. Jesus always sees beyond our faults, our flaws. He sees right through the mask, but he wants to speak to the true root of the issue so that we can be set free. You know what? At some point of our lives, and hopefully many times throughout our life, we are found running to Jesus, kneeling and asking him burning questions. But I want to ask you today, when he speaks those things to you, are you going to listen or are you going to do like what we see the, the, this rich young ruler do? In fact, 
uh, verse 21, again, let me pick this up. Jesus looks at him, loves him, and says, one thing you lack. Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and pick and come, take up the cross, and follow me. You know, we won't look at it, but a little bit later on in Luke chapter 19, Jesus interacts with a man by the name of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is short in nature, and he goes up into a tree to see Jesus. There's such a change in Zacchaeus that he's going to give away half of his goods to the poor, and he's going to restore fourfold of what he's taken. Zacchaeus went far beyond the laws of that day in restitution. His giving and his commitment showed a complete change of heart. A complete change. You know, if we were to read back a little bit of Mark chapter 10, there's a story right before the rich young ruler of the children that come to Jesus. The disciples want to get the kids off of him. And Jesus pulls the kids in closer and he uses these words. He says, Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he told them and he took them in his arms. He laid his hands on, bless them. You've got to become like a child thinking wise to enter the kingdom of heaven. Isn't it interesting? The very next thing we see in Mark is a, uh, somebody successful in life, but he cannot do what Jesus asks him to do. You on the outside, he had it all together, but on the inside, he was lost. And that's where we have to watch it because, you know, Satan is the master manipulator. He'll paint a picture of something that looks so good. If you're not doing this, if you're not doing that, if you don't have this, if you're not going there, you're a loser. Take life by your hands and your control. Jesus says, no, you need to give up this life and allow me to lead and control your life. You know, when I was, I, I was probably 16 or 17 living at home, and I, I remember my mom specifically, I remember the story. She says, I'm tired of picking up your underwear in the bathroom by the shower. Okay. And, and I think I just said, oh, all right. And she says, no, 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 I'm, I'm tired of every morning after you're getting ready for school, I go in and I pick up your underwear and I put it in your dirty clothes. I'm tired of doing that. And if I see your underwear again, I'm going to start throwing it in the trash. And I, I started laughing. Yeah, okay, all right, I'm sorry. Well, uh, wasn't about, about a month or so later, I remember um, getting probably a pair of underwear out of the drawer and looking in the drawer, there was no underwear. Looked in my dirty clothes hamper, there's no underwear. Went out, looked in the washer, and did I leave it in the dryer? There's no underwear. And I thought about it, and I remember I asked my mom, I said, hey, I, I, I'm missing all of my underwear. Yeah, you are. Well, why? I told you that don't leave your underwear in the shower. So I started throwing it up. You threw out my underwear? I throw you. This is my last pair. Too bad. And I'm not buying you any more underwear. Oh, so here I was having to drive down the street to Kmart to buy my own underwear. And I thought, underwear is expensive. Well, I think that cured it that day. It made a change. You know, sometimes what, what's hard and what's sad is we need drastic things to take place before we make a change. Jesus early on said these words, be humble like a child. Be humble like a child. Listen to what I say and change. In fact, we read in verse 22, says that he was sad at the words that Jesus said. And he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Think about this. After his personal one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. Think of it. You have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jesus, and you have a question, and he not only asks you to give all you have to the poor, he wants you to follow him. You know what he's saying? Come be one, my, one of my disciples. 
and you can't do what Jesus says to do, and he leaves sad. And I thought about that. Wait, we're not supposed to leave the presence of the Lord sad. We're not supposed to leave the presence of the Lord discouraged. We're supposed to leave the presence of the Lord empowered and it with direction and with faith and with encouragement. This guy leaves worse than when he came to Jesus. He came to Jesus running and kneeling and now he leaves worse. I don't think I ever really see that in the scripture. He left the presence of Jesus worse. In fact, the Greek word says he was deeply grieved. But I thought about this. His only mistake was he walked away. Had he just stuck it out? Had he just done the hard thing that Jesus said to do? Had he just stick stuck with what Jesus said? Do the hard things. Do what he says to do. Come follow him. That there would have been a different freedom in his life. But we see and we get a picture that he's deeply sad and he's deeply grieved. His one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. He leaves worse than when he came in. Boy, you don't see that. I was trying to think. I've probably had conversations where the person left feeling worse than when we've talked. I've probably left worse with tough situations than I went in. But not Jesus. Can you, can you think of a little bit of an eye-to-eye -eye with Jesus? I think you're going to do whatever he says to do. There's a little bit of uh, thunder in the background. Maybe that was God saying, you need to do what I tell you to do. You know, you're probably thinking this, though. Yeah, but if I had a chance to go eyeball to eyeball to G with Jesus, I would do what he said. Well, you know, it's interesting that uh, I thought of this. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16 says these words. This is Peter. We did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Let me say it this way. We didn't follow the fairy tales. We didn't follow the conspiracy. You know, these aren't conspiracy theories. These aren't illusions. These aren't tricks. These aren't some cleverly crafted stories that we all collaborated on to present something that wasn't is. He says, no, no, no. We were eyewitnesses. In fact, Peter in that same verse goes on about being an eyewitness at Jesus's baptism. Being an eyewitness, if you go through the Gospels, he was an eyewitness of everything that happened with Jesus, even his resurrection, his, his ascension. He says they're not fables. In fact, he goes on and he says these words that are very interesting, that you're better off having the prophetic written word of God. You're better off having the prophetic written word of God. We don't have time to go through that, but... The, the word of life, the word of God is Jesus. So when we go eyeball to eyeball with the word of God, it's as if we are going eyeball to eyeball with Jesus. This word is alive and it's active. That's why the more that we're in his words, we're listening to what he would say exactly to us and if we'll do that when we go to the scriptures, if we'll run and kneel and submit ourselves, he's going to speak to the very question that you have. In fact, James picks it up this way. James chapter one. I just want to read verse 25. He says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Listen to what he said. The perfect law of liberty continues in it, is not a forgetful hearer, but is a doer of the work, this one will be blessed. You know, we have the opportunity every day to come before Jesus, the word given to us 
spoken to us so that we don't have to walk away today discouraged and grieved. Let me tell you, to follow what he says to do is going to hurt and be painful. It's not going to be fun sometimes, but there is tremendous joy and life and peace when you're following exactly what he said to do. In fact, I think those words that we need to hear today are, come, take up the cross and follow me. That should be a daily anthem when we get up, that we're picking up that cross to follow him. When we look into his words, it's the perfect law of liberty. It's like we're going eyeball to eyeball with Jesus, listening to what he would say to us today. You know, you've got burning questions, just like I do. You've got things that you need to have answered. Write those things down and read your Bible. Listen to the Bible on audio. Allow those words to confirm in your heart exactly what the Lord would have you do. I pray those things over you today in Jesus' name. In fact, let me mention this. We read that he's got a burning question. What's his question? Eternal life. Didn't even get answered, right? Well, it did because Jesus uh, understands the significant and value of eternal life. Let me let you. But he understands the daily picking up the cross and following him. But if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you know, we're, we're living in these unusual days. There's shakening. There's waking up. Uh, things that are waking up. We're having to trust the Lord more today than we did years ago. But the most important prayer decision that you can ever make is that you would allow the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. In fact, I want to lead you in that prayer, the prayer of salvation, uh, where you've heard the term being born again that we get out of the scripture. The most important prayer is that you would pray, allow Jesus to come into your heart. Pray this prayer. We're going to put it on the screen. Pray this prayer with me today. Dear God, I believe that Jesus lived, died, and rose again for me. I accept him as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins. And today I begin my relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's the beginning, the most important prayer that you'll ever make. And I encourage you, would you reach out to us so that we can help you with some very important next steps? You can do so on the, the social media platform that you're watching, or you can email us or go to our website and you can connect with us as well. So important because the question that this rich young ruler had was just answered if you prayed that prayer. Well, today, as we receive our tithes and offerings, I want to read this verse, Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself first, right? Who's first? The Lord's first. Delight in him, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Well, let's pray this prayer all together today. Pray it not just to follow along because it's on the screen. No, it's got to be in your heart personal as you pray and confess it with me as well. Ready? Here we go. As I give in today's offering, I give because God first gave to me. God has given me his love and forgiveness. He has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness, and he holds nothing back. He gives into my life even when I don't deserve it. Now I have the opportunity today to give back, to give with thankfulness out of what God has already given to me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you're giving today, you can actually do it two ways. You can go to our website, hillschurcharcadia.org. You can click on the Give button, which is in the right top screen. It's safe, it's fast, it's secure. And you can give by mail. You can write to us, The Hills Church, P.O. Box 661419. 
Arcadia, California, 91066. And the, then may the Lord bless you for your faithful support and giving uh, to the work of the ministry. Now, if you can tell, um, I'm growing a little bit of stubble here. That's because in November, we do no shave November. We've opened it up for men and women this time. What we do is we go the entire month with no shave November to uh, really identify and support Foursquare Missions Press. Foursquare Missions Press prints, Bibles, tracts, other literature and other languages that go all around the world, shipped to churches, missionaries and ministries for free because of the support of the U.S. churches. So I encourage you to not shave if you can. And at the end of the month, make a donation. You can give uh, through our website to Foursquare Missions Press online. We'll get them those funds or you can go directly and give it to them. But let's take that opportunity to no shave November to support the word of God getting sent all around the world through our support. So as we close today, as we do each week, we read Psalm 121, 1 and 2. And it says this, I look up to the hills, but where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. We are praying for you today and we command the Lord's blessing upon you this week. In Jesus name. Amen.